Hey guys, so I just wanted to film a quick intro for this video. I was not planning on doing this video because I was not planning on ever doing this. I was not thinking that I'd be doing a DIY face mask. I am not a DIY person. I'm not a crafty person. I don't consider myself a creative person. I had seen a couple people do this tutorial. So Nava Rose, I had watched hers. I watched a lot of her videos. However, she's like DIY queen and I, I don't have these type of like sewing skills and stuff like that. Then my friend Cassie also did this and she followed her tutorial as well. And I thought, do I dare? Do I dare try it? I still was kind of unsure about it. And then I decided, you know what, I'll just try it. I'm only gonna try it one time. And if it comes out horrible, then whatever. But if it comes out okay, then you know I want to have done my best on it. I don't have a sewing machine, so that was kind of like an issue. I was really just working with the items that I had in my house, obviously, and I just, I don't have a sewing machine, I don't have an iron. So everything was kind of just improvised. I thought it was just gonna end up being part of a vlog, but since it came out so well, I decided to go ahead and make it its own video because once I post a picture, I know you guys are gonna ask me. So. This is the completed mask that I made and I think I did so I'm like really proud I don't think you guys really understand the how not DIY of a person that I am So I wanted to show you how I made this also one of my followers on Instagram told me that one of her friends is a registered nurse And she sent me the DM that she sent her and she said that if you don't have access to an N95 mask or anything like that What you can do to help these masks out and make them a little bit more functional and effective is you can take one of these little microfiber cloths. So these are the microfiber cleaning cloths from like your sunglasses or whatever. So I guess they're saying that if you use something like this inside of your mask as kind of like a liner, even if you make the mask yourself, it makes it a more functional mask and you know, just a little bit more helpful. I would wanna attach this kind of as a removable type thing just to have it as a lining because I wanna be able to just like take it out and wash it and all of that. And you can wash this as well, just it's just fabric. But honestly, I'm not really going anywhere. It's just kind of like if I go somewhere, plus like, I don't know. I just wanted to make it because I thought it was cool. Also, I did use the initial template from Navarro, so I will link her video and also the template for you. And that's basically, I changed everything else about it pretty much except for the, um, the actual size and the pleating just to kind of make it Number one, easier for me because I'm not as crafty as her and I don't have a sewing machine. But number two, I knew that I had wanted to use like this instead of tying it because what I did is actually stretchy and it's adjustable. So I don't know, I just thought that, that would be good. Especially if for some reason I ever got a regular mask and I could wear this over the top of it as like a covering. But I mean, we should really be saving the medical masks for the medical professionals. But since the CDC is saying that putting anything over your face at this point is better than nothing, and then also hearing that you can make it a more functional mask by putting a piece of the microfiber underneath, I thought I would go ahead and give it a try. And I'm really, really happy with the way it came out. I think it looks really cool. And I'm just really happy with it. So hopefully you guys like it and you make one too. It wasn't as hard as I thought. And like I said, if I had a sewing machine, it would have taken me so, so, so much less time. I'm not planning on making a bunch of these because they are kind of time consuming. Again, I'm doing everything by hand and stitching the whole thing by hand. So I'm gonna make one for my mom, brother, and dad, and then I'm retiring it, I'm hanging it up, and that's gonna be it. But I did wanna show you all of the little steps, and if I can do it, you guys can definitely do it because I'm not a crafty person. I, this is like my first DIY and I feel like it was a success. Like it looks really good. I'll show you guys what it looks like on and you guys have probably seen it already on Instagram if I posted it. But if you try it, let me know. I would love to see your pictures on Instagram and stuff like that because I don't know, it, would just, it just came out so much better than I expected. I'm shocked. I'm honestly, I'm really shocked. And I think you guys will probably do an even better job than me. I have a couple of different options for a dust bag. I mean, health, but make it fashion. You know, like if I have to use a random piece of cloth anyway, we might as well, you know, keep it cute. I also have this old bralette that I'm gonna cut the straps off of because it's adjustable here and I'm gonna use that for my ear. So I have the template here from Nava Rose, which she did a tutorial on it and she provided these that you could print out. Um, because I'm doing something with a logo on the front, I can't do the other design, but this one is easier anyway. So I think I'm probably gonna end up going with the Chanel, let's be real. So we're basically just gonna wing it, but like kind of thoughtfully wing it. I don't know if that, I mean, it's like an oxymoron. I'm going to go ahead and steam this. Thank you, mom, for the steamer. That's what I asked for for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're an adult when um, but yeah I don't own an iron so this is just gonna have to do I mean hopefully this is gonna work on this because it's actually pretty thick but we'll see 
So I cut out my template and because um, the material that I'm using does have a logo in the center, it's not just plain, I wanna make sure that it is also centered on my mask. So what I'm gonna do, I don't have any of the like fabric marker or like the, I don't know, is it chalk or like wax? I don't know what it is, but I do have a box of crayons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take out the white crayon and I'm gonna see if this will actually mark on here. And it does, so that's good. And I don't have to be too precise. It's like only for myself and I don't really expect it to come out that great anyway. So that looks to be, eh, I don't know, I guess that's not really the center. Is this the center? This might actually be the center. Could I measure it? Yes. Am I going to measure it? No. I'm really kind of more of an eyeballing type person to be honest with you. So I'm gonna mark the sides again. Now I wouldn't mark it on any place that you're gonna be actually seeing the mask because I don't know if the crayon will really come off. As you can see on the template, it's got a one inch seam allowance anyway, so this is not gonna be um, seen. So I've gone ahead and cut where I marked and then just to cut the rest of it I'm just gonna fold the fabric over. So this is a bralette from Victoria's Secret. This is what that strap looks like and it's got this little stretchy adjustable part which is the reason why I wanted to use this plus it was the only thing I was like willing to cut up. Having an adjustable part of it I thought would be a good idea so I'm gonna save these and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down to the correct size. So actually, I feel like if I press down, I can kind of see where the Chanel is. Don't mind my nails, quarantine. And the acrylic powder that I ordered like two weeks ago hasn't gotten here yet, so it's supposed to get here tomorrow. The nails will be better tomorrow, but I don't know. This is what we're doing with our time today. So I can kind of see the Chanel through. I don't know if you can, but I think what I want is I think I want the Chanel not to be dead center. I think I want it to be a little bit higher than that just because when you fold it, I want to make sure you see it in the front and it doesn't end up more towards the bottom. So I'm going to go take a, I'm going to fold this over and take a look in the mirror and see if that's going to kind of work for me. And then I'll be right back. I'm trying to figure it out seam allowance wise, what I want. So I did have to do some adjusting, but this is going to be the top and bottom. This is where the logo placement is going to be. So that way it goes a little bit higher because if it was dead center, it would be kind of like in your mouth when it was all scrunched down, which is not what I want. So I want it to be a little bit higher. I've got it a little bit closer to the top. So now I'm going to just do a seam around the outside and then do the pleats. And that's what it looks like so far. I'm gonna go ahead and splice this footage in here because I wanted to give you some tips now that I've made a couple of these. And originally when I filmed this, I was not planning on having it be a tutorial because I didn't know how it was gonna come out. And because the original tutorial already exists, I was just doing it as like vlog footage. So there are some steps that I kind of skim over here. I suggest watching the original tutorial video and then you can make changes accordingly the way I did. So one thing that I noticed is that the steaming really helped because anytime that I would like set up the folds, like say if I was gonna do the pleats or whatever, um, if I messed up on it, steaming it again would almost erase all of the other stuff so I can get a nice crisp line again and it was just easier to fold. Also, if it's a little bit damp from the steamer, it folds a lot easier as well. Like all of these, I didn't really have to tack down. This one's a little bit different. So basically if you have a fold that you're having a hard time keeping, you can always tack it down with either some extra needles that you have or if you have the actual little pins or whatever, you could do that. If you don't, you could also go through with like a light stitch. I didn't show you when I was making the pleats because I was trying to figure it out when I was filming this. But basically all you do is take this and fold it over and then just keep doing that down the mask. What I would do is once you do the first pleat, pin it so that way it stays. And then when you do the second pleat, pin it, then the third pleat. So that's basically all I did. I did three pleats and it gives you four panels and that ended up being the perfect size for me. And then you only sew it in pretty much this much. Basically, I sewed it in as far as the fold over piece goes and then stop just because you want it to be able to expand in the center. So you don't want to sew it the whole way, just kind of the edges of it. Keep them kind of small, especially if you have smaller features. Otherwise, it's not really going to open up around your nose and everything the way it should. If you've got something with a logo, it actually does make it a little bit easier because then you kind of can just measure all of the pleats based on that. So if you guys wanted to do it like me, I think it's a little bit easier because all you have to do is sew the top seam, sew the side, 
sides and then sew down the pleats and attach the ear pieces versus having to feed everything through everywhere. So yeah, hopefully those tips were helpful, but I would go ahead and watch other people's tutorials too, just to see if you can get some little tips and tricks from there or you know, you might see a different way that you wanna do it. But I really feel like the way I did it was kind of like the easiest way, especially if you're not skilled at sewing or you don't have a sewing machine. So I finished sewing all of the pleats and everything. Again, this would have been so much faster if I had a sewing machine, but I did everything by hand. Plus I had never done pleats before, so I was kind of like, when I was folding it, I was like, wait, how do I, what, what's going on? So anyway, that's what it looks like. And then when you put it on around your face, it will pop open like that. And I am going to go ahead and attach these. So I'm finally done. I want to show you the finished product. It fits so perfect. I'm really happy with the way it came out. I haven't put, like I said, the lining or anything in it yet. And then lastly, I think this is what I'm gonna try to use to attach the microfiber liner into the mask. They have a sticky side on them, but I'm gonna sew them just so that it stays. And hopefully that works. I don't know. I haven't done it yet, but that's kind of like my idea. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're staying safe and healthy and I will talk to you very soon. Bye. Hey, oh, I'm calling mom. Where is she? Yeah, mom's making dinner. Oh. Yeah. Dad, I can't believe you cut down her tree. It was dead. Mom, uh, Dad, I saw, I could see the buds on the, I could see the buds on the tree from my living room. You tell them, Holly. But either way, like, who just cuts down random trees for no reason on a Tuesday? You guys are that quarantine bored where you're just hacking down trees. That makes the yard look bigger. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Um, not really. I'm just, I'm at home. I'm making a face mask at home. Oh, cool.